I want to talk about what it means to really praise God. Hey, and what praise is. Because if you know what praise is and you understand, you won't get trapped into thinking uh, that you have to praise God. Now let's look. The scripture is clear. And I want to deal with the word praise. It comes um, from pretium, which is um, a word in the Latin meaning price or value, defined generally as a sincere acknowledgement of a real conviction of worth. Uh, you have to understand the nature of God, who he is, what he is, in order to be able to praise him. You have to have a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God, not the knowledge of man, not the knowledge of what God does, but a knowledge of who God is. You have to know him and the power of his resurrection. And, and theology is the study of God. And so often when you go to a church, what they talk about is man. It's man-centered. The songs are man-centered. And the whole concept that's been put over is Judaic, not Christian. And we are Christians, Christ believers. And when you start challenging people, they get a bit upset because it's what they've learned by tradition. And tradition is what was passed down. And in Jesus' day, when he came to earth, he found they would changed the law of God into the precepts of man. And the tradition of the fathers had taken away the truth of God, who he really was. And they did not study that anymore. They just believed in tradition. I was talking to uh, the master class, the people who are doing a master's degree here at the Bible College. And I went round the table asking them what they'd learned. Quite a few said, well, we've had a total paradigm shift. In other words, our whole view has changed. Why? Because they understand it's not what I do, it's what God has done for me. Each one of you here this morning, you need to understand that we begin from the basis of grace. By grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. You can't earn, you can't study, you can't fast and pray, you can't pray enough, you can't read your Bible enough to earn anything from God. And if you do, you haven't got salvation, you've got religion. My Bible says, by grace, that's totally undeserved favor, I'm saved through faith, and that not of myself. It's a gift of God. Uh, and it's a gift <coughs> because of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. My Bible says, he became sin who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God through him, through what he did, not through what I do. Salvation is of God. It's not of me. And Jesus Christ is the Savior. You cannot earn anything. You cannot attain to anything. You cannot do anything. God lives in me. Christ is my sa He lives in me. <laughs> and if he lives in me, I can't get any closer than being a child of God with Christ in you. The hope of glory. All right? Put your hand on your chest. Say, I can't do anything. It's Christ who saved me. It's Christ who paid the price for my sin. He did everything. He bought my healing. I can't do anything because he's already done it all. Now, that's a Christian gospel, briefly put. But they're taught. 
religion. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees had all their schemes of how to get God to do things. And when Jesus came to earth, they were so annoyed because he came and he broke all their traditions. And so I want to talk about praise. True praise. That's knowing the value and worth of God. God Almighty. God the Father. God the Son and God the Holy Ghost. Hey, you know, God really wants you to know how to praise. But you have to praise from the right motive. If your motive is wrong, you're in trouble. Jesus said when all the people, the multitudes, came out and he was riding on a donkey. And he was riding into Jerusalem and they were shouting, Hosanna! Glory to God in the highest. And they came and complained that, hey, they were calling him a king. And they all came and complained, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. And Jesus said, you know, he said, if the people kept quiet, the stones would cry out. You know, the whole of creation praises him. It never is silent. Revelation chapter 4. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Everything in the whole of creation has been created for the pleasure of God. You do understand that. O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things. The reason he's worthy to receive glory and honor and power is because he is the creator of all things. You cannot praise God unless you understand he is the creator of everything. And everything's upheld by the power of his word. First thing that a man has to do, or a woman, is a revelation of God the creator. And that's why in Genesis, the Bible starts with creation. You have to start believing in the creator God. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Why? Because you're the creator. Is that plain? Yes. Hello? Yes. Is that plain? Yes. Without faith in the creator, you could never praise him. Number one. Revelation chapter 5, verse 12. They were saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. The second thing you have to understand, the creator of redemption was Jesus Christ. He was the lamb that was slain. And if you don't believe in redemption being totally and completely of God, and Jesus Christ being the lamb of God, you won't ever be able to praise. You have to understand redemption. He redeemed me by the blood of the lamb. And an understanding of the lamb of God, who he is, the creator of heaven and earth, spoke the world from naught. If you don't believe in redemption, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. You can't really bless God if you don't understand Jesus did it all. Two things, God the creator, God the redeemer. 
Amen? You understand that? When you get up to praise, you don't praise God for circumstances, happenstances, or whatever it is in your life. What you praise God for is who he is and what he has done. Two great things. Hey, he's the creator. Glory and honor. Why? He's a Second thing, glory and honor. He's the redeemer, the lamb of God. He was slain for us. All right? When you come into church, the only thing you praise God for is who he is. You come to praise him. You not to come to get all emotional. It's truth. Praise God in truth. Turn with me to Psalm 148. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his host. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He hath established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord from the earth, you dragons and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind, fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, everything praises God. Do you understand? It's fulfilling his word because it's created by the power of his word. Life is sustained by his word. And everything's there to praise God. That's why in Romans chapter 1, it says, the whole of the creation reveals his glory. Everything. Everything. You have no excuse, O oh man or woman. You come into this church and say, well, I don't believe in God. You just look at creation. The whole of creation shows forth the glory of God. Is that plain? Now, that's what the Bible teaches. I love it. Revelation chapter 5, verse 13, And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Amen? Everything. Every creature, every creature, I, I cannot understand how anyone could write blasphemy and suggest that creation keeps silent. <laughs> Jesus said, you know, <laughs> if they didn't say, Hosanna, <laughs> the stones would cry out. The whole of creation... You know when it says in Romans, and hear this well, when it says in Romans, chapter 8, the whole of creation groaneth and travaileth until the manifestation of the sons of God. Do you want to know what it means? It means that the whole of creation cannot understand why it is man, born of God, does not worship and praise the creator for who he is. It's groaning because man has failed to give God the praise. Man has failed to give God adoration for who and what he is. What they do, they give thanks for what he does for them. They get concentrated, my need, my sickness, my 
poverty. I need help. And they forget, hey, I've got to praise him for who he is. Do you understand the difference? Hello? Hello? <laughs> I come to praise my God for who he is. Creator of heaven and earth. <laughs> All honor and glory to him. When I go out and I walk across the fields, I just love to see my God and what he does. He created all things well. What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou considerest him? <laughs> and Jesus said, do you know, the very stones had cried, the whole of creation... The only people on earth that don't understand the wonder of my God are people. The birds, the animals, the fowls of the air, the fish of the sea, the deeps of the earth, the heavens clap their hands, the trees clap their hands, the flowers give glory. It's just people. Self-conceited, self-centered individuals who are more concerned with themselves. Self-centered. And God says, hey, deny yourself, take up your cross, time to follow me. And we've got to praise him for who he is. You know, that's, that brings praise when you start realizing, my life is dependent on him. Hey, I wouldn't have life. If it wasn't for God the creator. <laughs> Nothing exists outside of him. Everything's upheld by the power of his word. He's wonderful. Wonderful is my God. Doesn't matter whether you're a heathen or a Christian. <laughs> He's God the creator. I find it so wonderful. Hmm? It comes from Isaiah originally, but this is Jesus quoting it. Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but... Their heart is far from me. Mouth, lips, honor him. Heart, a million miles away. And he was talking to the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the leaders of his day, the religious people. Oh, it was all praising God, honoring God with their mouth and their lips. Trouble was, what went on inside of them was a million miles they resented their God. They resented who he was. They resented what he did. They were always angry at God. You can't praise God if it doesn't come from the depths of your heart, depths of your mind. God intends us to be people who are in truth, not in lip service. And he said to the Pharisees and Sadducees, well, it's with your mouth and your lips you're honoring me. Your heart, a million miles away. Chapter 11, verse 25. At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them unto babes. You know, God reveals things to people who come with simplicity and childlike faith. I feel sorry for people who are intelligent, so smart, they injure themselves. Uh, he, he hides it from the wise and the prudent. A lot of people think they're so smart. He reveals it unto babe. He, Jesus said, except you become as a little child, you'll in no wise enter in. I've got childlike faith. Matthew 21, verse 16 says this, look. Uh, 
And Jesus saith unto them, Yea, have you never read, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, Thou hast perfected praise. He was talking about the multitude that came and began to praise him and shout Hosanna. And he said, haven't you ever read it? You know, there's people with simplicity of faith that really believe in God the creator, really believe in God the redeemer, really believe in what Jesus... Hey, as babes in Christ, they just praise him. They can't help it. You know, when you're saved and you're born of God's Spirit, God fills you with the Holy Ghost, you just can't help but praise Him. You can't help but adore Him for who He is. God created all things for His pleasure. What a God. You know, there's such beauty in the whole of creation. The very depths of the sea... If you ever watch films of the depths of the sea when they go down, you watch them on um, Sky Television, on National Geographic programs, how the very depths of the sea, there's the most beautiful, colorful fish hidden right in the very depths, three miles or whatever it is, below the surface of the water, there's these fish. And when they film it, they're, they're fluorescent in color. They're so delicately colored, delicately colored. And, and God put them there. That's why the Bible says in the very depths of the sea, God has created praise. There's something so beautiful. You look at the birds, how delicately every feather is colored and in order. And you look at them and you think, how can God, the God of all creation, paint them so beautifully and you look at the flowers and the texture of them and the beauty of them and you think how is it this creator it's not chance and wherever you go in the world you see the glory of God the wonder of his creation and a human heart adores him who created it all I don't adore the creation, I adore the one who created it for his pleasure. And, you know, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. I find people, they want all the reasons, they want to understand everything. To me, I just love it. I love this wonderful place God created. You say, well, it's fallen. Yes, it's fallen. But nothing can hide the glory of God. Nothing. <laughs> it's revealed in the things we see. The nature of God is revealed in the things we see. It says so. Romans chapter 1. I don't worship creation. I worship the one who created it. And then there's the wonders, not only of creation, but of redemption. 2 Corinthians 9. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. You know, there's just no way you can thank God enough for his gift. His gift of life. Have you ever tried to explain to someone what it means to be born again and filled with the Holy Ghost? Have you ever tried to explain to someone what it is, life is? You know, God met me and God filled me and God did something beautiful for me. Have you ever tried to explain to that person what it is, how it is? It's impossible to put into words. How do you explain to someone that God came inside of you, took away your sin? It's as though you'd never sinned in your life. And, and, and the freedom and the joy, and it's as though a million tons was lifted from your shoulders. And, and you, you use words, but nothing can explain what you haven't experienced. And, and when you try and explain it, you find words too puny. How do you explain to someone the wonder of redemption? You can't explain it. You use words, you say, well, it's like this, it's like that. 
But in the end, it, it's unspeakable. <laughs> There's no way you can describe what it is to come out of sin and into life when God, almighty God, comes with his mighty power and quickens you within. You can't explain. You can tell them in words, but it doesn't explain it. The only way to know is when God meets you. When that mighty God of all creation comes in all his glory and fills you with the Holy Ghost. When suddenly all your sin is divided from you as far as the east is from the west and you know God will remember it no more. Words cannot express the joy that hits a soul. Ah, it's unspeakable. That's the trouble. It's by the foolishness of preaching men are saved. But you know, it's God who does it. <sighs> 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. You know, what love? We're called the sons of God. Do you know, the whole of creation groaneth and travaileth for the manifestation of the sons of God. If only you understood the manner of love that God has for you. That you should be called a son of God. What love that God should redeem you. That God should send his only begotten son to die for you, to bleed for you, to suffer for you, to rise from the dead for you. Behold what manner of love. Uh, and I find people, they're, they're, they're cold. Until God meets them, they can believe emotionally about it. But you have to know. You have to experience. You have to taste and see that Lord, he is God. Ephesians Chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Do you know, you can't bless God unless you understand you've got everything. He's blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Hath. I'm not looking for anything. I've got it all. I'm not seeking anything. I have everything. <laughs> I have the creator of heaven and earth living in me. His name is Jesus. He lives inside me. I bless God for the wonder. I've been blessed with all spiritual blessings. It's happened. I find so many charismatics and, and rheumatics and Pentecostals, they're seeking for something more. I, I've got it all. I got it when I was born. Born from above. Hey, you can't have more than Jesus. You really can't. <laughs> you can't have more than the Holy Spirit. You really you can't have more than God the Father. When God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit lives within, what more can you have? There's no more. <laughs> He's come. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus said, I'll come. My Father will come. We'll make our abode in you. Hey, what more can you get than God? That's wonderful. It's so, so wonderful. Now, you might say, well, you know, I believe God's done things in my life. Well, if you don't know you've got everything, he hasn't done anything. Because when he does it, you realize it's done. Turn with me to 1 Peter, chapter 1. Blessed 
be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. My living hope is in what Christ did. It's not in what I do. It's a lively hope I have. <laughs> I was begotten again, born from above, by what Christ did for me 2,000 years ago. It's not something I do. It's what he did for me. Grace. It's all done. It's wonderful. You know, unless I have that experience, I can't praise God. I could use words. I could, could use lips. I could use, but you can't do it from heart. Heart is engaged. Praise comes from a full heart. I come to praise him for who and what he is. He's everything to me. And you can only have that by a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. I know. I know who my God is. I know what he's done for me. I know his creative power. And I know his sovereign beauty. And the glory of everything that he upholds by the power of his word. I understand he controls everything. I understand that he is the king of king and lord of lords. I understand he is the almighty. How? I just know. And that's the only way you can praise. And if you don't know, it's just words and religion. Could be true words. But it won't come from the heart. It'll just come from the mouth and the lips. I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded of neither things present nor things to come, says Paul. <laughs> Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Why? Because I know who he is and what he's done for me. I know him. Paul writes, that's all I want to know. Know him and the power of his resurrection. That's simple, isn't it? And when you come together as a church, it's, it's to just lift up your heart and magnify him. Blessed be God. You know, in, in Luke 2, 14, it says, Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. The angels began to express it. When they saw, when they saw the babe, Mary brought forth Jesus. And the whole of heaven began to sing. And the earth began to tremble. Do you know, that's why when Jesus was crucified and he said it is finished, do you know the whole of creation shook? The skies went dark. The graves opened up. The graves couldn't hold life everything shook it was alive creation knows it's God it's only man who doesn't that's why it talks about a heart of stone the whole of creation responded Do you know, that's what's so wonderful about my God. <laughs> Stormy winds fulfill his word. Do you know, 
when a stormy wind was blowing across the Lake of Galilee, he just stood up in the boat when the boat was about to sink and he just rebuked it. Hey, what are you doing trying to sink me? Get out of it. <laughs> it was only trying to trumpet forth who he was. He just rebuked it and it was calm. <laughs> That's who he is. He stills the storm with his word. On another occasion, he just walks in the midst of the storm. Didn't notice. Just walking across the water. Uh, and there are the, the disciples struggling in a storm. And they see this person walking on the water. And they think it's a ghost. <laughs> they get frightened. It's Jesus. He's just, just as much at home. It's, 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 his, it's his. Hey, creation is his. He's at home anywhere. What a God. And when he came, the winds were contrary to them. When he came into the boat, they already were at the other side. How'd they get there? Had turbocharged engine, I don't know. Boom. Suddenly the angels just pushed them. And they're there. Do you know, God is a good God. Have you ever had an experience where God has intervened in your life? And saved your life? When I was a young man, a long time ago now, I used to, with a friend of mine, we used to go across the Wally Skipton Bypass. Um, you know, over Yorkshire Dales. And we used to race from Liverpool to Ripon and time ourselves to see who could do it the quickest. And we had some hairy escapes. Uh, and I remember one day we were going, and we were coming up, at, and there was a bus, and I saw a bus ahead, and we were only doing about 80. And I saw this bus, and Dave began to pull out. I said, don't pull out, don't pull out. And he didn't listen. And he pulled out to overtake the bus because, he, you know, he knew that I was competing on time. And he figured that I just had a sense of danger. I said, don't pull out, don't pull out. And he pulled out. And as we began to get level with the bus, a lorry come in the other way, come hurtling the other way down a hill, and there was nowhere to go. Stone walls on either side. And we'd pulled out, and we'd just got level with the bus. No way to pull in. Now, what do you do? in a situation like that. And I shouted, Lord! It's all I had time for, Lord! And we, he put his foot on the brake and we knew the lorry was coming. There was nowhere to go. Head on. And we went into a spin and we spun. And then, to my surprise, we just stopped, stone dead, in the ditch, facing the wrong way. There was 16 foot of ditch where the stone wall wasn't. 16 foot, and we landed perfectly there, as gently as anything, in that ditch. And the lorry, we saw it come by us the split second we landed in the ditch. Never scratched the car, never scratched us. How did God get us from about 80 miles an hour and land us in the only place where there wasn't a stone wall? Perfectly right in the center of it and as gently as anything that not even a mark on the car and nothing was broken. Nothing was hurt. We laughed and laughed. Why? There's an almighty God who controls heaven and earth and everything that's in it. 
hey, he had a purpose in my life. He knows the end from the beginning. I have all confidence in him. Ephesians um, chapter 5, verse 19. You know, when you praise God, you should speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Do you know, very often I just find myself, I go to sleep praising God, I wake up praising God because God's good. All night long, there's a song in my heart. <laughs> I just find, if you don't have a song in your heart, you're dead. Totally dead. And I mean, a song of praise. There's a song of thanksgiving. Oh, God is so good. Do you know, God is a good God. And the whole of your consciousness is conscious of the goodness of God. And if it isn't, I doubt you've ever met him. You can't, he's everything to me. I, I just don't understand people who, who don't know. And, and Colossians 3.16 says this, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Do you know, the reason songs should be sung is to teach people truth. In the early Methodist church, they wrote the hymns biblically to teach people. And it's so important to be taught right, to know what's true, to understand the truth. Uh, then if you look with me in Revelation chapter 5, Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, and they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. What a song. Thou art worthy to take the book, open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And in Revelation 15 verse 3, they sing the song of Moses, the certain of, servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Amen. You know, we magnify God for who he is. We magnify God. Praise has to come from a realization of the majesty of God. Beautiful. King of kings, Lord of lords. Creator of heaven and earth. The one who loves us, who heals the sick, delivers the captive, leads the prisoner out of the prison house. The one who cares. We've been redeemed out of every kindred, tribe and nation by the blood of the Lamb. And it's so wonderful. The two things you need to understand, God is the creator God is the Redeemer. He's not angry with you. He's not against you. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. He did it all. And healing flows from Him. He does it. It's not what I do. It's not what I believe. It's what He does. And when you realize that, everything changes. No stress, no strain. It's easy. I love him. 
I want to praise him. I want to glorify him. I want to lift up his name. Because of who he is. So much praise is false. It's from the lips, from the mouth, but the heart is far away. Do you know, he who created everything. When you just look across the beauty of everything he's done, and you realize he upholds everything by the power of his word, isn't it wonderful? When you see and you begin to consider the God of all creation, if you can't praise him, the very stones will cry out. Don't you hear? Don't you see? Don't you understand? And the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the critics all looked on. And the multitudes came and they shouted, Glory to God! Hosanna in the highest! And they said to Jesus, Stop them! And he said, How can I? Why? If they weren't speaking what the whole of creation knows, the very stones would cry out. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. What a God we serve. What a majesty on high. What a glorious redeemer who redeemed man Oh, that the heart did know, that the soul did aspire, that the very depths of the being understood who he is. He's my redeemer. There was a man of old, he wrote, I know my redeemer liveth. I know what he did for me. How he came and shed his precious blood at a place called Calvary. He sweat great drops of blood. He hid not his face for the shame. And his love did tell me in his hand was my name. He loves me because he is. There's none other like him. He's so wonderful, is my Jesus. <laughs> He's wonderful to me. <laughs> it's unspeakable what you do, oh God. There are no words to express your beauty. There's no tongue can declare your glory. But we, we lift our hearts to thee to praise you, to magnify you. Lord, Lord of all glory. You know, miracles happen where he is. He's here. 
He's right here. He's not far away. You don't have to reach up into heaven to bring him down. You don't have to reach down into the depths to bring him up. He's here. This wonderful God of all creation is everywhere. And there's nothing he won't do. Nothing. That's what's so wonderful. He's a good God. He's a good God. 